What's up guys, Blitz here today bringing you another video. In today's video we got a new interview and information regarding Final Fantasy VII Remake. Square Enix's portal website conducted an interview with the localization team for Remake Part 1. This video will focus on Part 1 of this interview since Part 2 of this interview is expected to be released next week. I told you guys we will be covering all news following Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 and 2. And this definitely has some interesting information that gives us more insight on what the development process is like for the people who did the awesome translations for various languages in Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Final Fantasy VII Remake may be a Japanese RPG, but that is not the only language it was actually released in. In this video, we will be hearing from the English, French, and German translators of the dialogue. Since the Japanese dialogue is the main source, they do not appear in this video. So the first question asks, From what stage of the development process was the localization team involved in Final Fantasy VII Remake? Can you also tell us what kind of personnel structure was there in the Final Fantasy VII Remake localization team? Noriko Ueda says, We were involved from 2015, the year when the first trailer of Final Fantasy VII Remake was announced. The localization team was split into in-house and outsource, slash freelance translators and localization project managers. So this team has been translating and working on the game since the very first trailer back in 2015. Which, if you guys remember back in late 2017, Square Enix brought back the remake project in-house. And scrapped all of what CyberConnect 2 had been working on at that time to bring us what we finally have in Remake Part 1. Were there any unique challenges that arose due to this title being a remake? Ben Saban says, Balancing fan expectations regarding the original translation with the fact that the localization standards have evolved since the original, and certain aspects of the game have changed in this iteration anyway. Also, as each and every fan has their own ideal version of the translation, we had to come to grips with the fact that it would be impossible to please everyone no matter what we did. The French translator says, It was a bit daunting because Final Fantasy VII has an extensive universe and is such a beloved game that we knew that the expectations were going to be very high. We have to try and find a good balance between staying true to the original and making some necessary changes. The German translator says, As this is a remake of the beloved title, we wanted to keep the essence of what players loved about this game, while also ensuring that our localization meets today's standards. This includes adjusting to how industry needs have changed over time, such as the inclusion of voiceover in multiple languages. Of course, there are always going to be purists who dislike change and prefer things to remain the same, but I'm all for it being revamped and refreshing. Not just the dialogue, but even the story too. For me personally, I love the dialogue they went with for the English voices and the translation. And I'm glad a lot of things from the original game were normalized and sort of calmed down, like comparing Barrett's character in the original game with Barrett in Remake. Aside from some really good dialogue, I gotta give the actors who played these characters some serious credit. They all did a fantastic job on this game. And you guys know how much I love John Eric Bentley. Thank you so much, man, for bringing Barrett to life. On that note, what difficulties were presented in localizing a script that would eventually become spoken and acted, as opposed to just being read by the player? The English translator says, For many voice scripts, we have a guideline that a target language's voice must be within 0.2 seconds of the Japanese either short or long. So what do you think may work best for a specific line may not always be used because it would be much shorter or longer than the Japanese line. Moreover, even if you do go over by less than 0.2 seconds, you still have to be careful to check that by going over that line doesn't run over into the next voice line. For this project in particular, we had many characters recording simultaneously, and one character's lines for a certain scene were not always on the same hard drive as the character we were recording. So not only was it difficult to check on some things, it was also difficult to confirm that each character's emotions played well off of each other for that scene. There's also the difficulty of structuring lines to match the facial and body animations of each character. For example, if Aerith nods 3.5 seconds through a 4 second line, we wanted to make sure to have whatever word spoken when she did was slightly more stressed and had to be a word someone would naturally stress that way. You have to check for consistency of tone through the scene as well. Sometimes you think you may get the perfect read for a specific line, but when you review it in the context of the whole scene, it sounds terrible. Finally, each actor also has their own speaking pace, which almost never matches the translator's speaking pace. So even if you think you did a perfect job recording and making a line fit the voice file length, it might still have to be reworked when the character actually speaks that line in the studio. In summation, there's a ton of more stuff you have to think about when a title is voiced. The French translator says, Translating a video game Japanese voice script into a French voice script is a very difficult task. More often than not, the cutscenes are still a work in progress when you do the French translation and or the French voice recordings. This means that a lot of things can change or are simply non-existent yet, including, but not limited to the context, the gesture, and most importantly, the animation of the lips. Not only do you have to match very strict timings for the beginning and the end of each spoken line, 
but in the case of the French version, as opposed to the English version that benefits from lip sync adapt to the recorded English voices, you have to try and match Japanese lips that are not often even visible yet. You also have to take into account that the Japanese voice actors tend to use a lot of pregnant pauses between words for dramatic effect, which would seem very unnatural in French. So in a lot of cases, when the Japanese version has, for example, one sentence with two pauses, we would rather make three short sentences in French, or try to make a sentence that wouldn't feel too weird with such pauses if the spoken words are too short to be translated into separate sentences. The German translator says, For us, the biggest challenge was that the lines had to be matched to the length and pauses in Japanese. Since Japanese and German grammar and speech patterns differ greatly, that means we sometimes had to be very creative in our wording in order to create and make lines sound natural, given the above restriction. And thank you! Shout out to the German translator for keeping it short and sweet. No, I'm just kidding. It's crazy the amount of effort that actually goes into these projects. A lot of people, including myself, always think about the graphical department and how long it obviously takes to create those animations. But on top of that, the voice localization department has to work off of unfinished animations and lip syncing, which ultimately can cause people to rework many, many lines and dialogue. Then you gotta take into account that depending on what the original Japanese line is spoken, you have to come up with not just the language translation, but also keep that dialogue short in line to match up in sync with what the timing is for the original voice dialogue. And that all comes down to the actor's delivery and tone. You hear about how voice actors have to re-record lines up to a hundred times sometimes, but you never really stop to sit there and comprehend why that is. Some really fascinating stuff for me personally because I'm really interested in voice acting work. A lot of you guys on the stream tell me constantly I should try out voice acting and I think I definitely will. I'm gonna try my best to audition for Bugenhagen in Final Fantasy VII Remake. When it comes to translating things, one of the hardest things to comprehend are the numbers. When it comes to how many of you guys that watch these videos every day but are not subscribed. Only 22.4% of you guys that watch these videos are currently subscribed. Not subscribing to me is like choosing to go on a date with Kate Sith at the Gold Saucer. Why do that when you could be with Tifa? Or even Barrett? Hit that subscribe button right now, it helps out my channel a ton and it's entirely free and only takes a click of one button. Trust me, you guys won't want to miss any of these Final Fantasy Remake related videos. So subscribe today and help your boy out. Thank you. Was there anything else that made Final Fantasy VII Remake different from other localization projects? The English translator says the quality of cutscenes we had for the recording sessions as well as the ability to check on many of them in-game during translation made it much easier to tune the lines so that they match everything the best that we could. It was also nice to see almost every actor come into the studio and be hyped for their role. This game means so much to so many people and everyone from programmers to actors truly were excited and ready to give it their all. I'm not sure I'll ever again see that level of excitement from so many different people. The French translator says the schedule was very tight so we had to allocate a lot of staff to the project and multitask a lot to meet our deadlines. We usually have two or three translators per language on projects of this scale, but for this one we had up to six at the same time, which made it very difficult to be consistent. Sometimes one little change in the Japanese version would translate into bigger changes in several French lines, and due to schedule constraints we had a limit to the number of lines that we could re-record. So I had to make some really drastic choices. The German translator says, I found having German voices implemented into the game to be unique for me, as this was the very first fully voiced project that I got to work on. It definitely seems as if the English voice localization department had a much easier time compared to the French department when it came to their objectives. The French localization definitely had a tougher time because they had a lot of scheduling issues it seemed like and time restraints. However, the German department actually cracks me up here because they just seem happy to be here. Their responses are really solid to record and edit here. I can't lie because some of these paragraphs are kicking my ass. But they really just say here like, yo, I'm just happy to be here. This whole experience was unique to me. This is the very first fully voiced project I've ever been on. Question for you guys who have played the French or the German voice acting for the game. What do you guys think about them? I'd love to hear your input in the comments below. During our next remake playthrough, I do plan to play it on Japanese voice acting as I hear Barrett is very entertaining and I also hear that the world itself with the NPC voices and item shops and stuff like that, they actually immerse you even more into the game and I'm all for that. I can't wait to check that out. Final Fantasy VII Remake's world has a lot of unique terminology. What approach did the localization team take in tackling that aspect of the game? The German translator says we wanted to keep as many original terms from the Final Fantasy VII compilation including titles like Crisis Core and Advent Children as possible. That said, we had to make sure that they still worked in the context of this game. Including the updated battle system, we used the legacy terminology as the baseline and then modified the terms we felt no longer fit the new context. 
that's really awesome here that they're trying to keep things consistent through all media for Final Fantasy 7 and the entire compilation, whether it's Crisis Core's prequel or the Advent Children movie which takes place after the events of the original game. All of that is pretty damn cool to me. Surely the Final Fantasy 7 Remake localization team also used the latest translation tools and techniques. Could you give any examples of how changes in localization culture over the last several years played into Final Fantasy 7 Remake's project? The English translator says, Way back when, it used to be that a translator somewhere was given the text files for a game and just told to dig in. Nowadays, many of the new titles that we translate are done by people in-house who often sit near the writers and programmers. This not only allows for a free flow of information between translators and developers, but also gives us an opportunity to be more involved in the project as a whole. For example, multiple songs were only sung in English, and we were often tasked with taking lyrics that the director had written and turned them into English, complete with a line-by-line -line explanation of our choices. I also remember cooperating with the developers to help standardize location names between the Japanese and English versions of the game. Even if we ended up using different terminology, at least all parties involved knew where the other one was coming from. I don't think that level of collaboration was possible when games were first being translated. The French translator says, 20 years ago we had to work with simple text files that were often organized in an inconvenient order, so we had to puzzle a lot of things out. Nowadays, although things aren't perfect yet, we still sometimes have to try and find what goes where, but such is the nature of video game development. We have internal localization tools with powerful search functions and other conveniences that make things way easier. The localization project manager says, Whereas games were often localized after everything was completed in Japanese, many are now localized while development is ongoing so all versions can be released simultaneously. As is the nature of game development, myriad instances of the Japanese source text can change drastically through the developmental process, and keeping up with the vast amount of changes while still making sure to hit the release date is no small feat. One thing that helped for this game was our use of the translation file management tool, Biblos, developed by the localization division. Its tracking features enabled us to stay updated on both the many changes made to the Japanese text and the progress each language was making. I did not think that the localization team actually sat into big project areas like that. This is actually pretty cool because they could further pick the brain of the creators, directors, and other team members while also getting hands-on insight to song lyrics and how to interpret them. Localization makes a big difference and affects more than you guys would think. At the end of the game, when we are leaving Midgar in the Japanese version, Aerith says, I hate the sky in the translated text. However, in the actual English voice acting version, this was actually changed to Aerith saying, I miss it, the steel sky. This adds more emotion to her final words of the game and brings back her conversation when she was talking to Cloud about how much the open world scares her and how safe she actually feels while in Midgar since she's been living there her whole life. Little things like this brings more depth to the characters and makes moments of the game more impactful in my opinion. I really wish I learned a second language in high school. I took sign language but I completely forgot everything except how to spell. I could still do that, I think. And that wraps it up for this video guys. That was part one of the localization interview from Square Enix's portal website for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss when part two goes live next week. I will be covering that one as well. Shout out to the members on the channel. You guys are the real MVPs. Thank you all of you guys for supporting the channel and getting ready for our giveaway to get started. We will be giving away multiple PS5, so you definitely want to be subscribed or join to become a member. Being a member gives you multiple entries, which also increases your chances of winning the giveaway. So be sure to not miss out on the chance to win a PS5 by not being subscribed. Welcome everyone who joined the channel from the Minecraft Steve reveal trailer for Smash. On Saturday, October 3rd, we will be going live at 10 a.m. Eastern to also stream Sakurai as he breaks down how Steve works. I'm also hoping to get more announcements in regards to network fixes and overall character changes, so be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy VII Remake videos are coming your way and you won't want to miss that. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.